Hello, everybody. Hello. Let me know when you all are here. Got some fun stuff for y'all. Got a lot of things popping up. Oh, that's me watching. <laughs> Can you see me over there? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let me know when you're in the room. How do you do? How do you do? Give a nice shout out and hello. Hope everyone is having a wonderful Wednesday. That means we are two steps away from the weekend. Hope you enjoyed your lunchtime. Woo, woo, woo. I got a nice poem to read from Jay Taylor. And I want to see if I can try to bring one of y'all on camera with me and see if we can't uh, have a little talk and a chit chat. Boo ya, walla walla, wing bang boo. Dane, welcome, welcome. How are you today, man? Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Hope the week is treating you right. Welcome to the show. It's the catacombs here on Sworn Nation. Yeah, yeah. All right. I got an itchy nosy. That is my Japanese name today. I'm doing good. How are you? Did you have a good weekend? And is this week treating you right? Especially now that it's halfway done. Um, I hope you did have a pleasant weekend. I did. I mostly pussed around the house and, you know, hung out because it was hot in Arizona. It's getting hot. In April, and that sucks. So that means we're gonna have a long summer. Nine months. <laughs> it just feels like it. It may not be nine months, but it sure feels like it. Jay, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I got your poem here for us. Okay, so um, before I get started, um, I was coming into work today, dropping my daughter off, and then heading in, and <laughs> There's a sign for, you know, this wing place, and, you know, they're telling you what's, what they have in their specials. And in big red letters, it says, chicken strippers. And I do a double take, because in my mind, all of a sudden, I had a mental image of a chicken being thrown out onto a stage at a strip club, you know, looking around, bawk, bawk, and then all of a sudden, the music's marked by it, bawk, bawk, it starts stripping off its feathers. I don't know. It was weird. I, I, I got a good chuckle because I couldn't get the mental image of a chicken in a strip club stripping. I don't know. I thought it was the funniest thing I heard today. So hope you guys had a good laugh today. It was hilarious. Uh, if you want me to see my chicken dance strip tease, then um, who knows? I'll get silly. <laughs> Kenneth Rhodes, welcome. How are you? Thank you for joining us today, guys. I got a lot of cool old stuff today on the catacombs. But first, I want to start things off with a beautiful poem from Jay Taylor. He just sent me. It's called A Warning to All. <clears throat> Make sure I get my good reading voice out there. Tearing through flesh, the blood and the bile, wading through bodies with a treacherous smile. Sinew and bones tear and they break. Torment will come. Your life is at stake. Dude, this has got a good flow. I'm digging this. Mad Mike, he is called. He kills with a glance. Run away, you fool. This is your last chance. Freaking frack, glow, ready to tear through your body. Pull out your entrails. Leave you there sloppy. Dude, you're good at these. From the cradle to the grave, my Mad Mike the undead. Watch your back, or it's a shovel to split your head. Death comes to all who are within his sights. Moon high above, he walks the crimson night. Kill again, the motto he lives for. It does not matter if you are rich or poor. This man may be new, but we have yet to hear his story. Heed my warnings, it will be gory. 
Jay Taylor, everyone. Jay Taylor, round of applause, everyone. Shout out to Jay Taylor. Thank you for another amazing poem. <laughs> oh, wow, dude, beat me to it. All right, so that was the uh, A Warning to All by Jay Taylor. Uh, that is the third, maybe fourth poem he has sent me to read out. And, uh, you know, if you guys uh, got your own poems, send them to me. Inquiries at coffeecomics.com or send it to me on my Facebook page, uh, Hooligan Marauder. Um, I'd love to read it. Um, hey, any of you also have fun little uh, fan art? Sure, why not? I'll show it off. Um, anyways, uh, lots of cool classic stuff. Uh, Jay's already scooped up one, but I got more. But let's start it off with some new stuff. I have a bulk copy. Zach, the Zombie Exterminator, Heavy Metal Edition number six. And the Zack edition, number six. These are two metal covers. They were offered. Um, these have been in the vault. So I thought I'd bring them out and show them off to you. For all you Zack the Zombie Exterminator fans, I highly recommend you read this book. Um, it is a lot of fun to read. Um, I would have loved to have seen it. Um, it was originally written as a, a film uh, script. Um, I really like the graphic novel, and I recommend you guys pick up today. It's more... Uh, Something a little lighter uh, here at Coffin Comics. It's a lot of fun to read. Um, I got a really good chuckle, and I think you might too, especially if you like sick, twisted humor and all things um, kind of making fun of the whole reality show kind of thing. So really, really great read. So I recommend Zock, Zach, Zock, Zach the Zombie Exterminator. I don't know where that came from. Eric Carve, how are you? How are you? Next up, I have 11 of these. I found them in the store, and I thought I'd present them today. This is Lady Death Fantasies, number one, I Heart You edition. I have 11 of these available for you guys today. So there's 11 of these, 11. And once that's it, they're gone, sold out. No more. All right. Oops, I got a lot of this. I'd also like, very happy... This is going to be on the store until we are sold out for all you Chaos Comics fans out there and completists. We now have on the store Lady Death and the Women of Chaos Gallery Number 1. I just stole a nice chunk of stock onto the store. So these are available until they sell out. Love featuring the old classic stuff when I find them. And this was really great. I found a Nice box with some uh, old chaos stuff, and it was a nice chunk uh, selection of this book, so I'm really happy to uh, make it a part of our store now permanently. All right, now we're on to the really weird, cool stuff. Lots of different classics, I guess you would say, uh, for all you card collectors out there. Let's start things off with the Lady Death Chrome Card number 13, signed... By Brian Polito, Jason Jensen, and Stephen Hughes. I only have one available. And I think it's appropriate that is card number 13. I really, uh, one thing that was great about working in comic shop in the 90s, um, there was just so much merch coming out and trading cards were huge. I mean, huge business. Um, Everybody who had a character or who had a, even indie, indie publishers were making trading cards. Um, I remember some of the ones that were probably the most notorious is the um, serial killer trading cards, where there was a series of trading cards based on serial killers. I know uh, parents groups in the late 80s, early 90s flipped out on those. Uh, even though I know the shops I worked at, you couldn't be 18 to get those cards. They wouldn't sell them to minors because they knew parents would freak out and it was kind of dark for a kid. So um, yeah, the 90s were really cool for collectibles. Uh, they really tried to uh, outdo themselves each time um, coming up with these great ideas and gimmicks with trading cards. And here's an example of a couple chase cards. This is from Lady Death, Chromium Card Series 1. This is chase card number one. I have two of these available. So you can see, you can actually, it's almost like an animation cell, how you can see through it. There's the reverse side. This is card number, uh, chase card one. I have two of these available. 
These are really great. I, I really um, remember watching people buy uh, trading cards. We even have some people, and this is what some of the early, uh, when Magic the Gathering is also becoming popular, people would bring little scales to weigh the packs to see if they got one of those special cards. Kid you not, we actually had a policy in the store, you cannot weigh the packs of cards. Because it was so annoying when everyone's going through everything, weighing stuff and taking out certain packs, but leaving nothing to everyone else. So it's like, dude, let it be the luck of the draw, I say. Next up, another one from Series 1, Chromium Series. This is also a Chase card. Jim Ballant is the artist. This is Chase card number two. Another classic, beautiful Chromium card. Hey, Eric, I'll probably be reaching out to you uh, hopefully today or tomorrow. Just trying to get caught up on a lot of uh, work. Um, yesterday, I spent my day making medals. Um, for the lush, naughty luscious metals done by um, Mr. Uh, Richard Ortiz, beautiful books. Uh, and then I also started working on the uh, Cataclysmic Majesty Tippin medals, so the Azures, um, the Ultimate Editions, the Legend medals, stuff like that. Started working on those today so we can get that out of our, uh, you know, I get that process done so we can get those orders shipped out quicker to you guys. So. I'm very excited to uh, get started on those for y'all yesterday. Next up, I have another chase card. This is Lady Death Series Chromium Chase card number five. Stephen Hughes is the artist. Bam, beautiful. I really loved chase cards. Um, I have some in my Godzilla collection. I have a huge binder of old Godzilla card game cards from Japan, from my God, 20 years ago now? And then I also have some stuff um, from the other Godzilla series, and I have cool little holographic cards. It was always awesome when you buy a pack of cards and you always got a chase. It was like you felt like the luckiest person in the world. All right. Here is that same card, but this one is signed by Brian Polito. I only have one signed by Brian. Again, it's chase card number five. So I have one unsigned, one signed. But wait, there's more. I also have, let's see. Dude, I agree with that. That is correct, Dane. Click on that link. Go dive it in. I've got a lot of fun stuff today, including this. This is a Lady Death Chromium card number 86 from Series 2. This is signed by Brian. And remember, I think it was last week, I was telling you guys, all these trading cards and these little neat things of merchandise, I'm discovering and I'm putting up on the catacombs. This stuff right here, this is, this is the building blocks of Coffin Comics. Brian took a lot of these stuff, did a lot of shows. Before he had a booth, he was over at Artist Alley, pimping his wares and getting himself back into the game. So all these little pieces, I consider the foundations for Coffin Comics. And, um, yeah, this is what uh, Brian was doing. He was getting back in the game. And then I also have some really cool classic Coffin Comics editions I found from, I want to say, maybe 08 to 09 before we started doing Kickstarters. So um, look to see some of that stuff coming up probably next month in an upcoming vault sale, maybe. I don't know. You'll have to find out. All right. This was a really cool find. Uh, this was, a, I thought it was just a, another one of the uh, promo cards I have, but this one's actually rare because it had a special update stamp on the back, letting you know that the series all chromium. So this is a pretty cool little find. It's signed by Brian. It does have a COA. I only have one. This is it. I was hoping I could find more with this gold stamp, but nope, this is it. She's a rare one. So all you big card collectors, well, here's one of those gold stamped update promo cards. And then I have three of the uh, regular ones of those promo cards. As you can see, it doesn't have the gold foil stamp on the back. 
I have three available. Again, another beautiful classic image by Stephen Hughes. So I have three of these unsigned available right now on the catacombs. It's Lady Death promo card number one. And I do have another one of these promo cards signed by Brian and Stephen. Get back. Oh, there we go. That's better. So yeah, this is uh, this is really cool stuff to find. I do have more cars coming. Um, just getting everything cleaned up and getting them into fresh new bags. Um, I have put all of these ones into top loaders, so when they get shipped, uh, they have a little extra protection for you guys. Because um, nothing sucks worse when you're just like, hey, I'll get that trading card, and some savage at the post office decided to throw things around because they don't care and your thing gets damaged so it's heartbreaking so i tried to make it extra extra protection for you guys because these are the only ones i have jay look at you man you are speaking up on all the class stuff good for you man all right next up wizard magazine for those who don't remember wizard magazine used to come out monthly and it was put in a nice bag, it was a poly bag, and they had like ash cans, trading cards, just anything to promote something from uh, card companies, uh, comic publishers, you name it. And it also told, had you interviews, told you about upcoming events in the comics, anything you needed to know about the comic book industry, Wizard Magazine had you covered. They had price guides, the whole nine yards, a wonderful magazine. And they did a couple uh, Chaos Comics uh, promo cards. And this is Lady Death Wizard Magazine promo card number seven. This is a holographic card. Um, I believe I have like five to ten available right now on the store. Um, as you can see, it's also slightly embossed too. On the next one I'll be showing you, it's really noticeable. Um, but you can see like the texture in the cape and in the background and what have you. So really cool find. Um, it's a, it, it made me uh, think back to uh, all of us at the shop getting excited. So, oh, new Wizard Magazine came in, you know, and finding out what kind of promo pack or cards you were going to get. And I think they put AOL C CDs in there and stuff like that so you can get on the internet. They say really fun things, really, really fun, fun magazine. I, I do miss it. Um, near the end, the articles were like, it was like reading uh, Maxim or GQ, where it's like all oh, these great photos and ads, but it's like the main articles are like two paragraphs. It's like, that's not an article. That's like a glitch or something. It's not an article. All right. This is the Purgatory uh, Wizard Magazine uh, chase card number two. And I hope. You can note, I don't know if you can notice it in the frame, but it is embossed. So, um, yes, uh, I, I just kind of touched her boob. It's in 3D, so it, it is uh, almost like uh, artistic braille, I guess you would call. But this is card number two. We used to have them um, here at the boutique, and we sold out at our last Kickstarter event. Wow, it really reflects well with this light. Um, so I have a few of these available. I thought it was all sold out because they were only at the boutique. Um, but uh, I found a nice little stack and I'm presenting them here for you today. Do da, do da. All right, next up, more cool classic stuff. Like, how about a Evil Earning Lady Death Fiend Club stickers? Fiend Club stickers. I got 10 available right now. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, those cards are very fast. It's funny because um, I start the show and then Dakota loads up the catacombs fairly early. Um, just a little bit uh, before I go on so it can populate fast. And man, uh, last week, uh, Jimmy and I were just like, hey, we're showing the whole sold out. Oh, it's sold out. So um, they say I, I have more of this stuff coming, uh, different items. So uh, I hope you're able to get that, Carmen. Oh, good, 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 good. So Carmen is a big Purgatory fan, so hopefully I can find some other cool stuff while I'm digging through the catacombs for people like Carmen who are into the classic characters. So how about this? We're going way back. This is Chastity sticker. 
Boom. I found a, a nice little handful of these. I believe uh, 10 or less. So all you Chastity fan. Uh, for the card, I recommend nine pocket card sleeves and just a three ring binder. You can get an Office Max, story cards in there. Um, that's what I did. Um, again, I have a ton of Godzilla trading cards. Of course I do. Um, and I was always ticked because they could never get those cool little uh, collector's binders they did for the American series. And um, I got it, and I really hated it. I liked the binder and the art they used, but the, the sleeves they included it were really cheap quality and just crap. They like, fell apart fairly quickly, so... Um, I just ended up selling that set in the binder, but I replaced them um, with uh, nine pocket pages. I believe I ordered some BCW or well, I think it was Ultra Pro at the time. It was the big uh, uh, supply uh, company um, before BCW became a beast and just dominates it now. Uh, but yeah, uh, three ring binder, you can get it off the smash or you have one in your closet. If you want to collect cards, just go to your local card store or card shop and say, hey, uh, I need some nine pocket park card pages and they'll fit right in there. So it's a little uh, pro tip. Next up, another classic set from the coffin era. I was waiting for that. <laughs> that is true. La Muerta is everything. How about, this is really cool, a nice stack of Von Dalla stickers. Chaos Classics. I found a whole package of them, so these are on the store right now. All you uh, sticker collectors, these are classic Chaos Comic Eras. Um, this was from 2002. My God, that was almost 20 years ago. Jimmy Cricket, man. Really takes me back. And I have one Bad Kitty 1 sticker, and then a couple of the Bad Kitty Two stickers. Boom. Oh, oh, let's do that. There you go. Bad Kitty collection. So those are the stickers I will have for you. Also, so this was a lot of fun to uh, go through and, and dig this stuff up. It really brought back a, a lot of fond memories of working in the comic shop and ordering this stuff um, from Brian and they would drop off the little sticker sets or, or whatever, but... This really brought back a lot of fun memories. I have more of this stuff popping up, uh, just so you guys know. Oh, shit, I only had seven minutes. Uh, excuse my French. Um, oh, coasters, tell me about it. Um, I don't know if we have any more uh, besides what's on the store. Cool, Fergus. So far, everything I put on the catacombs is has been it, but, but, Carmen, and for all you guys, a uh, special announcement. There is going to be a lot of stuff, more classic Chaos Era stuff coming your way on Monday show. And um, probably a couple other items on Wednesday show. So next week, be a lookout. Um... The organization, there was no organization to answer your question, Eric. I, it was just boxes of, of books. Um, some had uh, years on them, some don't. Um, so basically, <laughs> and I'm still doing it because there's so much of it, um, I sort the box. Um, we like to collect our Lady Death titles or all our titles by um, storyline, story arc first. So. Uh, for Lady Death, it's like Chaos Rules, Damnation Game, Extinction Express, so on and so forth. And within that, it's like, okay, here's my BP editions I have for Chaos Rules. Here's uh, uh, artist proofs. So I have it subcatalogued that way just so I can figure out what's what. Um, and the work is pretty much done. But while going through and, and organizing this stuff, I find more of it. So it's like, okay... Here's my little where it's a box. Let me pull all this stuff. Oh, here's, here's some Zach books. I need to put them in my Zach box so I can organize it later. Hell Witch, of course. Um, so it, it's, it's, I'm excited about doing this because it's like I'm opening up um, a nice little back issue section um, in a store. Uh, and 
those who know me who work with me at the comic shop retail uh, when I was there, um, I loved organizing and sorting back issues. Um, older stock, I, there was just something about it, I just loved it. Um, just just getting the whole thing figured out in, in the correct order, make sure it's alphabetical and numerical. To me, some people find that boring. I, I find it exciting because I also look at it as a, a history lesson. I'm learning a little bit about the books as I uh, discover each new thing and try to find the history of it and whatnot. I, I absolutely love doing that type of stuff. I feel like I'm a comic book archaeologist. <laughs> so just kind of piecing everything together. So it's a lot of fun. That was a really cool question, uh, Eric. Um, but yeah, I like in my private collection, I like to do everything alphabetical. Uh, in my comic collection, so you know, all my Batman books are in alphabetical order. Where I have a nice Batman collection, so I have like Batman, Detective, um, Gotham Knights, and all those other titles, and then I'd have them sorted one through whatever the run was um, that way too. I just love doing it. Marvel stuff got really hard to catalog when every twelve to eighteen months they were stopping the title and giving it a new number one and it was just like oh then you had to figure out okay this is series number 10 from 2001 to 2003 so on and so forth so every time they would do that it'd be like oh um that was always the hardest but i just tried to remember the uh numerical if it was a like amazing spider-man they rebooted two three times it went back to the old numbering and then down to new so collecting comic books and organizing them is fun, but sometimes frustrating, um, especially with the series that's ended and they start the next series. Um, a lot of the shots I did, they always put the oldest series uh, first and then back, and then I've worked with some shots where they put the newest runs of series and back, and I always just believe in keeping it in a nice chronological order. Yes, Carmen, that is correct. You will start seeing that stuff. Um, it'll probably go... All the Lady Death uh, Kickstarter uh, Chotsky stuff we have, the bookmarks and the stickers. And then from there, um, it should go La Muerta, then Hellwitch. So, yes, that is correct. Um, that would be the order for all those items to be coming out. Scott No, hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's just their, their marketing thing, Jay. This is something they, they, they do. They've been doing it, um, I want to say, since the late 90s, early aughts. I remember a lot of Marvel titles um, ending and going back to number ones. And then um, probably around like 2005 through probably 12, it was like almost a regular occurrence. And it would frustrate people, too. Yeah, I... I I actually would help customers um, back in the day help organize their comics for them for fun. Um, there was one gentleman, um, he was a, a police officer here in Phoenix, and he had the most amazing comic collection I had ever seen. Like, uh, I saw some of uh, early Supergirl, the first Supergirls, you know, comic the Super Horse. I mean, he had a little bit of everything. And uh, it was never cataloged, it was just boxes full of random titles and it was a very overwhelming experience because uh, there was literally probably 250 boxes that had never been cataloged and that was hard um, uh, there is not the, each week as you've been seeing with the Lady Death Kickstarters you've been seeing the little chunks kind of like come out um, I believe it's uh, Mondays uh, but they've been launching uh, usually Kickstarter stuff weekly. So expect to see stuff each week. And then sign up for the VIP newsletter because that will tell you when those things drop. You'll see that stuff uh, inside there, uh, new merch. And not only that, it'll send you, uh, let you know when we're introducing new stuff into the store, especially those Kickstarter items that uh, you were asking about, Jessica. 30 more drawer boxes. Now, Scott, I, you and I go back... 27 years as long as I've known Brian because I used to work for your brother at the comic shop um, Yeah, uh, I, I, I have to ask you on a personal collector's note are the drawer boxes uh, Better than the regular ones. Um, I'm sure they are because man 
moving uh, short boxes or long boxes to get to the ones below it. That hurts, and it's a hell of a workout, though. See? Jessica knows what to do. Heck yeah, you got the right idea, girl. Uh, I have yet to see anything, uh, Kenneth Rhodes. I apologize. I haven't run across anything. Um, there might be something as I go through the catalog, through cataloging all the vault stuff I have. Um, I'm sure I'll run across one of those. Great. Thank you for the information. I'll, I'll let people know who I know have large collections. Go for the drawer boxes. Scott No gives it 100% uh, improvement over lifting boxes. All right, guys, that's uh, the show to this week. I just want to say uh, thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for our fun little um, Olympic Games we did on Friday. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I never thought I would be so blessed to work for a company that uh, has great customers like you, great fans, the Swarm, the Fiends. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's been a, a really hell of a good uh, Friday that we did that on. And, it was all for you guys, and I hope you all entertain, were entertained and had a lot of fun joining us. So that's going to be it for me. Monday, expect some more cool classic chaos collectibles, as well as some new stuff. But I'm going to be uh, dabbling in the classics for the next week or so. So I'm Julian the Hooligan. I'll see you guys Monday on our YouTube channel, the CCSN. I'm sworn to you. Thank you very much for joining me, and everyone have a great weekend. I'm out. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Why does this not work?